Hi everyone, so um, I don't really know why I decided to make this video, but well, right now I guess at least, but I kind of wanted to touch on the subject because um, I feel like a lot of people need to know what it's like and how people deal with it and such and uh, I apologize it's probably gonna be um, a long video and I might get a little emotional and I don't want to get emotional but it's just probably gonna happen and I feel like this is a good way to touch on the subject let other people know how to deal and what's going on and yeah so um, I kinda wanna make this video about dealing with someone or dealing with losing someone that um, you love due to like um, not a mental illness but like any illness anything like that um, I lost my mom this year on April 12th because of breast cancer I already feel myself getting emotional but I really don't want to start up with it but um I guess some uh, background is um, she first got diagnosed and I think around late 2009. I don't want to say that for sure, but I'm pretty sure that's when it first happened. So basically it was all okay because my mom, she wasn't stupid. She got the help that she needed. She wanted to live. She wasn't. Um, she just did the right things and eventually her cancer disappeared, so it was good. And then it, uh, I guess she went for her checkup in 2011 and they found another tumor where it used to be, so that kind of sucks because it came back and nobody wants to hear that again, like bad news again. It just really sucked for me hearing it the first time and the second time. So. The second time it happened, they decided to put her on chemotherapy pills. And I don't remember how long she was on those pills for, but she was on them for a really long time. And what they were were just an oral way of taking chemotherapy, not through like veins or anything else, because she did that last time. And it seemed to work well. And so she took those pills for a long time. Um, and the cancer didn't really go away, it just kind of stopped spreading, it just froze the cancer completely, so that was good. That's mostly what you want to hear. Not that it's growing, not that it's gone. Well, I'd like to hear that it's gone, but it's frozen, and it's not moving, and it's not going to harm her. <sighs> um... Then after, I don't know when, I think around September, November, they decided to put her on a different treatment for chemotherapy, which was again through the, 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 the veins. And so they took her off the chemo pills because the objective of this chemotherapy was to get rid of the cancer completely since it was frozen. So they ended up taking her off the pills completely and she went for her first treatment, and um, I guess she kind of had a allergic reaction or something to it, I don't remember. But it didn't go well with her body, so they didn't really uh, continue on with it. I'm not too sure if they put her on anything else, I'm pretty sure she was still taking a lot of pills, but not like chemo pills. So... After that, um, sorry, this is kind of hard to explain. I kind of want to keep my cool here, but it's hard. So, um, she got really sick. She used to, she would get like really tired easily. She would sleep all day. She wouldn't eat, and I don't know. It just kind of happened. Like she needed to go to the hospital one day, and uh. November, so she went in November sometime, I don't remember how long she stayed, for maybe like a week or two, I don't remember, but I didn't really think much of it as, at first because, you know, the hospital, they're going to make her better, they're going to find something to help her. Ugh. 
sorry. <laughs> and um, so she was doing good in the hospital. They were treating her good and everything was going okay and then she went home and it was pretty much normal for a couple weeks or so, maybe a month. And she had to go back again because she kept getting sick again, the same things were happening. And so it was basically the same thing. Uh, she came home after a couple weeks and uh, she still wasn't as active, I guess, and she'd sleep all day, she was in pain, I didn't know what was going on, I didn't think much of it at least, because I'm like, I know my mom's gonna be okay. <sighs> Something in my throat, okay. Uh, but I guess this kept kind of happening until February, until it kind of hit me, because uh, I didn't really, I didn't, I'm so stupid, because I never thought of it as anything. All these times she's been to the hospital. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to tear up. Um, I just didn't think of it. I knew my mom was gonna be okay in the end. And then I remember the day. It was February eighth. My dad took me and my brother home from seeing her at the hospital one night. He sat us down, and he said, "Look." The doctors said they couldn't do anything else, and that there wasn't much hope left, and that our mom had, sorry, three to six months to live, and uh, it was just really hard. There's not really much else to explain about it. It was just really hard for us to deal with, because honestly, my mom's been my best friend my whole life. <laughs> I'm sorry. And me and her had a bond that me and my dad will never have. And it's just really awful because my dad was never really around for us growing up. I mean, he was around, but not as much as he should have been. And now. It's just my mom was the one that took care of me and my brother most of the time, so I don't know. That was that, and it just kind of hit. And my dad like promised us that he'd be here for us more, and he has been. It's still not the same though. Like me and my dad's relationship hasn't changed at all, which I really hope it will someday. But what you have to do when you hear like that information, you have to be there for whoever it is you have to let them know how much you appreciate them how much you love them and all that and you have to think in the present because you don't want to look into the future you want to know about the present you want to feel content and all that so That was going on, and it was just really difficult for me, like the whole family. We went in to go see her the next day. <sighs> I'm sorry. It was just like the most difficult talk I've ever had with my mom. We told each other how much we loved each other. She told me she'd always be there for me, no matter what, and that just kind of hit me. She looked at me in the hospital bed, and she grabbed my hand, she's like, don't worry, I'll always be there for you, no matter what. And that's just what really hit me, and it still hits me today. I'm sorry, I don't really want to be this emotional, but it happens, so... We're trying to get through this. A couple months has gone by. She's been getting drowsier most days. She hasn't eaten. She's gotten extremely thin. She was probably about 80 pounds. Which is probably like half my weight. By the time we decided to admit her into a hospice. And by that time, my mom 
I don't know how to explain this, but I don't think she could think straight anymore. I'm sorry, I think someone's listening to me, but it's probably not. It's probably just the cats in the hallway, but she just, I don't know, she couldn't really think straight. Like, whenever I tried to talk to her, she couldn't really answer her phone when I needed her to use really. Whenever she did, it would just wouldn't be anything related to what we we're supposed to be talking about. It was just really difficult because my mom was just losing everything in her head because she also had brain tumors in her head for some other reason. And I think that's what had to do with it. So we decided to admit her into a hospice after a while. I told her about it. I told her that I've had friends that had similar experiences with hospice with their loved ones going there and they said they really enjoyed it and it's a nice place and everybody's nice and you like it and it's just a lot better than being in a hospital because you are treated more efficiently and professionally, well not professionally but uh, more appropriately for like how you're dealing or how you're doing because a hospice is like a hospital where people basically go to die and it's hard to say that but it's true and so we ended up getting her into a hospice that's actually really close to my house so that was a plus I guess and um, I hated it I don't know how my mom thought of it but I mean, it's a nice place, there's like really nice people, but it's just like the presence and like the feeling you get when you get, you're in there, it's just, everyone wants you to be so happy, cause like, I don't know, there's like people that play music there and it's, and I don't know, it's just not the place that you, for in my perspective, that you want to actually be happy in. I tried so hard. And it's, yeah, so we're in the hospice. My dad would pick me up from school every day. He'd be home more often because he usually works up God knows where up there. And he'd not be home that often. But my parents were never divorced, so. But my dad would be here more often, and he is today. But um, he'd take me to see her. Um, it was just really miserable because I had to see her laying in the bed and she looked miserable most of the time. She was losing hair, she was bone thin, she wouldn't eat, she had trouble moving. It's just not fun. Um, it was a pain because at hospices you're allowed to go home some days to visit or whatever. And it was just such a struggle to actually get her into the truck and into the house because you'd have to help her up the stairs, you'd have to help her into a wheelchair, and you never want to see someone that you care so much about in that state. What really makes me angry is my mom was really young, too. She was only 52. <laughs> yeah, so that was that. Ugh. The people at the hospice were generally nice. They wanted you to be happy. Except for this one lady, I really didn't like her. And I know there's one person like this usually that works at the hospice. I don't remember what they're called, but this lady, she was trying to get closure, get us to get closure. She wanted to know about our spiritual beliefs and stuff like that. She wanted us to vent to her. I'm like, I'm not comfortable doing that. Honestly, it's like how I feel and stuff. So she she was actually really annoying. I'm sorry, I just got a text message. <laughs> um, she was actually really annoying. I didn't like her. She was always up in my back. Every time she saw me in the hallway, she asked me really personal stuff, and it was just to the point where I didn't want to talk to her at all. And one day I was just standing there with my dad and my brother. We were waiting for them to clean the room so we could go visit her. She came up to me and she was just like, oh, I need to talk to you for a minute. I was like, about what? She's like, 
I need to know more about your spiritual- I was like, that is none of your business and I think you should fuck off. I said it, my brother and my dad just looked at her and she walked away. Honestly, I know it was probably not the best thing to say, but I didn't like want to deal with that. Like she was being nosy and I didn't have the right to tell her anything about anything like that. But yeah, um, so generally the hospice had nice people, but I hated like, ugh, it just makes me so angry when I think about how it looked like. Ooh, it's so clean and it's, it's just eerie, I don't know. I mean, it's supposed to be clean, but, uh, so yeah, that was that for about a month. My mom was there for about a month, I want to say. And about a week before she passed away, um, my aunt and my grandma came in. I felt so bad for my grandma because she had to deal with that again because she lost her husband, she lost both my grandpa to prostate cancer and she did the same thing that me and my dad would do. We'd stay with my mom most of the time with her husband. So she had to deal with that again with one of her children, which isn't fair. I love my grandma a lot too, so. I don't know. Um, so they came down and they had a visit and it was a nice visit, but after a week they had to leave and um, April 12th, um, it was a Friday, I went to school that day, it was a good day, and after I went to my friend's house to help him record his radio show, so we did that. And usually when I do that, my dad comes to pick me up. So my dad came to pick me up that Friday. I don't remember what time it was. I think it was around 9.30. So my dad picks me up. He's with my brother. I was like, oh, why is my brother in the truck? So I walk in. I take a seat. I close the door. And my dad turns around and he says, we have to go to the hospice right now. I was like, oh, no, why? And he's just like, well, we don't think your mom's going to make the night. So... I kind of spent that trip crying, didn't really know what else to do. We walked in and we got there. There were people just staring at her, basically waiting for her to just go. And that sucked because you don't want that. You don't want random people just to stare at I don't know. So I got those people to leave and I got to say my last words to my mom. She was obviously unconscious. She was laying there with her eyes open, her mouth wide open. She was still breathing. I could see her still breathing. I grabbed her hand and I told her everything I wanted to. I just wish she was conscious for her to hear it because... I don't know. It was difficult. Because those are my last words that I ever said to my mom. And I was in tears and I couldn't speak straight. I didn't know what I was saying. My brother did the same thing. When my brother was in there, I went up to my dad and I said, Look, I know you're doing all you can, but I want you to know that you're never going to be like mom in my eyes. Because <laughs> my mom was just like an actual parent to me. And like, my dad's a good parent and all, but he didn't do the things that my mom did <laughs> to help take care of my brother and I. And he's trying so hard now. I love him for it. But it's not it's not gonna be the same. And so after that I just walked out. I walked into my dad's truck, sitting in the back seat, slamming my head against the seat in front of me. Screaming. Why does this have to happen? <laughs> my brother was outside having a smoke. My dad was in there for a good fifteen minutes. He walked out. My brother goes into the truck. My dad goes in the truck and he says, she passed away and I didn't know what else to do. I was with her for like the last 20 minutes. And that means a lot, but it really sucks to have it happen like that. Nobody likes to deal with it like that. So anyways, that's just kind of my story. It's how to cope with it. The thing is, I don't think it's 
you... <sighs> At first, you really don't. You'll have people say to you, it gets better, but believe me, don't believe them. Because you are you, and you believe what you need to believe, and when it gets better is when you know it gets better. Honestly, it hasn't gotten better for me yet. I want to believe it will someday, though, because I want to be happier. The past couple of months, it's just really hard, and I'm not happy. I want to be happy, though. I'm trying so hard, just for my mom. Without my mom, I wouldn't even be here today, and I know she wants me to be happy. I know she wants me to stay strong, so that's what I'm trying to do. And so anyways, what you need to do is you need to bond with the people you care about the most. Even though you've lost that one person, you need to hold on to those other people. Because you're going to need it. My dad has been there for us so much more, and I really appreciate it. But it's still not the same. Me and my brother, we get along still. We used to fight all the time, but we get along a lot better. We have for maybe the past couple of years, actually, because we were mature, but still. Um, my friends have been incredible. People have acted like a second mom to me. My mom's best friend. She's the nicest lady. She takes me to work with her. She cooks us dinner some days. She, she takes me to get friggin' coffee in the morning sometimes. So she's, she took me to get my sin number. She, she's like, the sweetest person ever. And you gotta appreciate those people. You gotta like hold on to those people. And honestly, if you guys are ever going through this, I hope you don't. But honestly, it has been the hardest moment of my life so far. And I just want you to know that if you guys need to talk, I am 100% here, even if I don't know you. I'm gonna leave my Tumblr in the linkage down below if you want to talk to me or if anything else. So yeah, um, basically what you need to do is you just need to stay strong. Hold on to those other people. You're gonna need them. Do what makes you happy and just do what makes them proud. That's all I can really say right now, so that's this video, I guess, so yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and over time, it will get better, it's just, it may not get better right away, you just gotta hope, hope, and yeah, so that's basically my story, um, yeah, thanks for watching, see ya!